So I feel that people that are popular are also kind of objects, you know. There are legends about that place and what happened. But the place has not changed at all. Hi, I'm Imtiaz Ali and I'm here to take you behind the scenes of Chamkila with IMDb. I'm making a car at night. I'm making a car at night and I'm making a car at night. Who is it? I don't know anything today. But it will happen. There seems to be a common theme across your filmography of characters who are artists. Um, what draws you towards such characters and is there an element of self-discovery that you are doing personally through them? The relationship between an individual and the masses is unfortunately not a very simplistic one. It's not like one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, it is always that there's so much love for somebody uh, but there is also that kind of uh, hatred for the same person. Even if the character is not an artist, I will tend to explore about myself. Even if, for instance, let's take the example of Jordan in Rockstar. He is an artist. He makes music and he sings like I write and I direct. For an artist or for a human being, there is nothing which is just, this is who I am and this is where I end. Exploration is also recreation, like you create yourself again. In Chamkila specifically, I would say that uh, you do get aware of the fact that when you do get very popular, you also get very criticized. That's such a double-edged sword and that happens, you know. You know, I used to wonder when I was a child that uh, Amitabh Bachchan is much older than me, you know or much older than my friends and people, but they all call him Amitabh Bachchan. They don't call him Amitabh uncle. But if they meet somebody else of his age in their real life, they will call him uncle or auntie or, or sir or talk about respectfully, not take their name. So I feel that people that are popular are also kind of objects, you know. Uh, that's a very, and that's something that I kind of understand. I won't say that I've discovered that through the making of Chamkila, but while in the making of Chamkila, I've understood that you can objectify a person who's popular. There have been artists in my films. I don't know whether I do it because I am a writer and a director, um, but I also feel interested in the lives of those people who don't toe the line, so to speak, and they do something unexpected that makes their lives also more dramatic for cinema. Diljeet Dosanjh has already played a character loosely based on the life of Amar Singh Chimkila. How did you convince him to play the same role twice? When I spoke to him, I assumed that he from his childhood would have heard about Chimkila. Especially being a musician, he's from the same area that Chimkila was from. So he knew everything about Chimkila. He had, as I came to know when I spoke to him for the first time, that he had already kind of made a film which is kind of loosely inspired from Chamkila's life events. So he knew everything. But I knew things specifically because I had gone and done research. And research is a very boring word. It was not research that I did. What I did is I was told a story. I was interested in it. Then I was, I went and met some people who 36 years ago when Chamkila and Amarjot were alive, were in the lives of um, Chamkila and Amarjot. I met Tiki, who plays the Dholak and who was his very close friend and who was a, this mercurial character that really influenced Chamkila. I met him several times. He got emotional. He told me shit that he regretted later. He told me lies that he corrected later, right? Because I met him several times. He said that I cursed Chamkila to die, that he is dead. So for me, research was going and meeting those people, sitting in those places where Chamkila had lived, going and seeing the particular office space, that, that building which was supposed to be and still continues to be the Sorry. office of all the artists, of, of all the singers in Ludhiana. And uh, going into those spaces, talking to those people, my interest became more and more and it led me to different people. Then I met Kikkar, who was the manager who plays this part. Um, and then he told me what happened that one night when Chamkila and Amarjot's body was being carried from one place to the other. Who came, who didn't come, why didn't they come, who was scared, who was not. Then I met Sivya Apaji, uh, Swaran Singh Sivya, who un unfortunately passed away. 
I met Shinda, who who was kind of Chamkila's guru in the beginning. I met these people. So, as I was getting more and more interested, the research was going forward, and I was meeting more and more people in Punjab. It was a very interesting thing, also because these people. they are talking to like chamkila was talking to the grassroots he was talking to those people who we consider the masses and he had the trick to make them uh, be entertained he knew how to entertain the masses that is such a quality i feel all artists like me all movie makers would love to know what it is that works with the masses right and uh, so that also comes to light when you make this film why don't you tell us one story from the sets of amar singh chamkila that nobody knows mehsampur is the place where amar jyot and chamkila fell to bullets where they were killed for 36 years after this incident that place has not changed everybody who knows music in punjab knows mehsampur knows what happened when chamkila was killed there are legends about that place and what happened but the place has not changed at all what we managed to do is to shoot that particular scene of his killing exactly at the same spot where it had originally happened the same house usi tarah se shaadi ho rahi hai we researched how the shaadi was how big it was and we set it up like that we had those same kind of laddus being made the same kind of parathas being made the same kind of rotis going across the field from the back end back exit to that other house where his car stopped what was the color and the thing uh, the number of his car where it stopped where chamkila got off where amar jyot got off how the bullet hit and where she fell the original chamkila uh, and amar jyot that's where our diljit and pariniti have fallen yeah that's where they fell. Yeah. in fact diljit almost had a kind of a surreal moment at that point of time because he said in an interview also that his finger got cut by the tumbi as he was falling in the shot so his blood actually dropped and as he was in the shot falling after getting hit by the bullet he saw his blood falling to the ground and he had this weird like this surreal thought that chamkila's blood also must have fallen to the same ground as my blood is falling now so that's quite a thing i think The music of Amar Singh Chamkila is recorded live on set which is much more difficult than recording in a studio. What made you take this challenging route? When I used to watch western movies and I used to be told that um the artists have actually sung the songs themselves and they have sung it on location. I used to be very impressed by that. You must have seen that all of these like even in La La Land you know the actors are actually singing and I used to wonder why they do it. Then I used to see the difference between a western musical theater or film um and our films with background music and and uh, playback singing. So usually in Hindi films you have the song playing in the background sung by someone else and the actor miming. They are miming, right? And they do it very well. But it has its limitations. it would be very difficult for instance for somebody to sing and then stop and then talk a little bit and then sing again in the life of a musician all the musicians that i know they are not going to sing throughout till the song gets over and then talk you know in a rehearsal scenario in a recording scenario or in live scenario even in a show if you see the show of a sunidhi chauhan she is singing then she will talk to the audience and then she will sing again to have that quality live singing was important as you know in this film there are so many sequences where diljit playing chamkila is uh, improvising rehearsing composing uh, and also performing so to have that quality i wanted live singing you know and for that i needed singers of that quality and that taiyari so diljit was the choice and diljit If if there's anyone, if there's one person in the world that can do this with Punjabi songs, it is Diljit. So I'm very lucky to have got him. Diljit to Sanjay loved the world over for his music. What was it like working with him, playing both the roles, an actor and a singer? Since Diljit yeah. was playing Chamkila, the music and the acting was the same thing. Because 
Chamkila as a person, because he was a musician, was always uh, imagining music, listening to music, reacting to music, reacting to sound. And that is what Diljit does. I never, in fact, I never had this thing that, oh, Diljit, you are, you are an actor now, so don't be looking at it like a musician, not at all. The music helped the acting. And it also eased him, I must say. Because Diljit believes that he's, an, he's a singer first, that he's a musician first. He doesn't look at himself like a, an actor. But he's, a, as we know, extremely gifted actor. Even before I worked with him, I knew that. I've been told that, I've seen that. So, being around music, having scenes of music actually eased him into the role also. And the other thing is, we used music a lot to understand the character of Chamkila, what he is thinking. Uh, because when a singer is singing and another singer is listening to it, he understands the person in a very interesting manner. Like all of us don't know what Arijit is, but the people that listen to Arijit a lot, and especially guys that are musicians themselves, will understand that these things will be there about him, right? So that way also we could get a lot about Chamkila and Dil Diljit was the, was, ha, gained a lot about Chamkila through his songs like that. How challenging was it for Pariniti Chopra to recreate Amar Jodh's music? Chamkila's compositions are always very high, high pitched. So for a girl to match that was extremely difficult. You know, when a girl and a guy sing at the same note, the same scale, it becomes more difficult for the girl because she's got to, because voices are thinner, you know. And her parts were sometimes even composed higher by Chamkila. So Amarjot in life had a very big problem because of that. That she was always singing on that note. Pariniti in this act film had this problem. That she, it, she had to sing very very high all the time and it's damn difficult. And she is an actor first. I mean she's not a professional singer as yet. Like she's an actor. So for her she really practiced very hard. And we also got a, a singing diction teacher. We got this gentleman from Ludhiana called Kittu. So Kittu Paji came from Ludhiana, incidentally from Dugri where Chamkila was from. And he trained Pariniti a lot. Also Diljit, but Diljit is from those parts so his diction was okay. But he still got some training with Kittu. And uh, to, uh, so both of them were trained to sing like that because we knew that they'd be singing live. It will, it's not as though you sing and if there is something wrong in your singing, we'll correct it later. Have you ever used IMDb? What's been your experience using it? Uh, I do use IMDb for trying to, un trying to get to know things, uh, film related largely but also otherwise about what titles are good, who these people are, what is being said. And I, IMDb for, in general references, is quite an accurate uh, repository of finding out how worthy <laughs> a certain title is, etc. So as such, there is always a discussion of IMDb. Amar Singh Chamkila streams on Netflix on the 12th of April. Do watch it, leave your comments behind, hope you like it.